The Pest and Predator podcast is brought to you by Field Heroes, powered by the Western Grains Research Foundation. Visit fieldheroes.ca to learn how beneficial insects can benefit your farm. Welcome to the Pest and Predator podcast brought to you by Field Heroes, powered by the Western Grains Research Foundation. Visit fieldheroes.ca to learn how beneficial insects can benefit your farm. I'm your host, Sean Haney, founder of realagriculture.com. Today's guest in the Pest and Predator podcast is Nevin Rosasen. He's the Sustainability and Government Relations Lead with Alberta Pulse Growers. Nevin, great to chat with you again. Great to be on your podcast, Sean. Yeah, th- this is such an important podcast. I, I, I know the audience has learned. You know, I, I know I'm learning. Every time we talk about some of these topics, there's always something that comes out of it that it really, really does benefit the agronomic side of, of the farm. So let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about biodiversity. Now, I know this is something you're very, very passionate about. Why is it important? Uh, like, you know, why is biodiversity important? And, and And how do farmers contribute to it? Uh, Great question, Sean. So biodiversity refers to everything living within an area. And that includes not only animals, but plants, fungi, and bacteria. And just as biodiversity is really important in our soils, uh, biodiversity is really important in our forests, insect biodiversity is also very important when it comes to broadacre agriculture and specifically Western Canada. Biodiversity is so important that Canada has also made commitments uh, to biodiversity, just as we've made commitments to reduce our greenhouse gases and greenhouse gas emissions. We are also signatories to COP15, the Convention of the Parties for Biodiversity. So this uh, is important in setting targets. Um, Where biodiversity on farms varies, Uh, If you look at different regions, uh, for instance, southern Saskatchewan in Alberta, field size is very large. Uh, There's minimal land or undisturbed areas of vegetation, so to speak. But when you move further north, farms in the parkland region, prairie pothole region, they have a lot more woodlots and wetlands and even stone piles uh, that serve as habitat. So this biodiversity is important. Farmers contribute to it by keeping undisturbed vegetation, uh, even, you know, old shelter belts also contribute to biodiversity. So, Nevin, I just want to back up. You said insect biodiversity. Now, I I think where you're going with that is where we get into the conversation of beneficials. Is is, is that, that's correct? Absolutely. Okay. Because that makes sense. Because, you know, when I think of when I, when you, when, at first glance, you're like, oh, insect biodiversity. Why would I want more insects in my field? But yeah, it's, it's about these beneficials, right? That's correct. And I mean, you know, often Western Canadian agriculture, if you're an urbanite and you've driven Highway 1, all you see is these wide open fields, right? And certainly that is a region where we're struggling to have biodiversity to provide habitat for these beneficial insects. But when, as you travel further north, I mean, if you've ever driven from Edmonton to Saskatoon and you've crisscrossed some of that region, you recognize how much um, there is in in diversity and not even just willows and uh, poplars, but other evergreen trees, et cetera. Um, And to give you an example, on on my family farm of the acres we own, 24% of those acres are, are either wetland, woodlot, fence line or stone pile so that's almost a quarter of our acres that are uh, acting as habitat for a whole range of different species so it's really important and i mean within these undisturbed areas we find also overwintering sites and you nailed it those predators those parasitoid insects those are the ones that keep our insect pest populations in check but also that those sites provide overwintering sites for not only those beneficials, but also for crop pests, which can be a concern to some producers. And many farmers that I've talked with on the topic of biodiversity say, well, yeah, that's an undisturbed site. And there might be a a predator or a parasitoid species, but there's also crop pests that overwinter there. And this is an area where we don't quite know how good the benefit is to how much of a, a problem it can be in the next year's crop. So certainly an area of research. 
Um, we know open pollinated crops such as canola will have higher yields if there's undisturbed vegetation that's near, right? They're open pollinated, they need those pollinators, uh, those native bees, flies, butterflies, etc. So we know that those habitats contribute to higher yields in those open pollinated crops. So you mentioned research. Are there areas where we, we could be doing more research on this topic? Absolutely. And I mean, we don't currently have surveys of beneficials on farms. We do, however, have crop pest surveys that feed into our, our prairie pest monitoring network, right? So we have maps from the previous year of where we've seen these crop pests. They can help inform us and be a, an early prediction tool for what we might see the coming year for crop pests. But we still have very little understanding of, you know, invertebrate biodiversity within wetlands, uh, even amphibians, other creatures that play an important role in functioning ecosystems. We have new technologies such as eDNA or environmental DNA, mm -hmm. where you can basically blend everything up, including all the invertebrates that you would find in a sweep net in a wetland, and then, you know, using DNA, sort out what species are actually present. So here in Alberta, for instance, we have the Alberta Biodiversity Monitoring Institute, or ABMI, they're investing in trying to find out, you know, more about biodiversity on the prairies. We also have InnoTech or Alberta Innovates, Ducks Unlimited, uh, the University of Alberta, University of Calgary, that are all doing research on biodiversity. But there's certainly much more work to do. Now, how should farmers, because I, I th my assumption here again is that depending on your geography, and you've kind of given some of the geographical differences and the realities, how should farmers be thinking about biodiversity on their farms? Well, first off, farmers should be aware that healthy ecosystems mean healthy crops, right? And they also mean, it means that you will not be limited by yield if you do not have those pollinators on your crops like canola or other open pollinated crops. But when, you know, farmers should be aware that when they're making a decision whether to drain a slough, which in Alberta you need permits and you need to navigate the Water Act, et cetera. So it's illegal unless it's permitted, but draining a slough, even burying a stone pile or removing a shelter belt, uh, an old fence line, these areas are full of life. I mean, we also hear that shelter belts in dry years will rob moisture from the headlands and obviously wetlands represent an obstacle in the field. They definitely, take away from field efficiency, um, draining them allows you to farm more acres. These stone piles that are from generations past are a nuisance, but they do house beneficial insects, including those pollinators, parasitoids, and predators. They keep the, your insect populations in check, insect pest populations in check, and you need to have habitat for them. So farmers should recognize biodiversity is important and take more time to think about how they can maintain and enhance biodiversity on their farms. That's really what we want farmers to take away today. How do I, how do I measure and weigh that decision on whether to, you know, to, uh, you know, try to gain some of those acres for, you know, productive crops versus, you know, the, the biodiversity element, like what goes into, like, how do you, you know, how do I weigh those options and try to figure out what's the, the, be the best decision for me? And that's a great point. And there's no perfect answer. Every farm, every situation, every field is going to be different. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're trying to increase a field size from 640 acres to 900 acres, the question is, are you going to gain that much efficiency? Right. Yeah. If you take out the one fence line where, you know, you're going from two quarter sections into a full half section and you've got that field efficiency and maybe you have uh, a stone pile in the corner and another fence line along that half section, well, then maybe then the benefits would outweigh, you know, the additional acres. So I think the best way to figure it out is to, to do a partial budget, see how much field efficiency you're actually going to increase and just have biodiversity in the back of your mind. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no perfect answer. There's no, uh, you know, economic ROI or any type of table that exists out there for biodiversity. And, you know, we're only just scratching the surface with field heroes um, at, at, you know, this continuing education, this knowledge transfer that, you know, we've got these bright young entomologists. What we need to start 
recognizing is that there's more to learn. And certainly, I mean, it's much harder to replace a wetland than to remove one, right? They don't nearly have, uh, have as much um, benefits, right, when they're removed and then replaced. Um, certainly with shelter belts, they take years to get established, right? So just a, just a you know, a, a second thought in your mind in how does this benefit me directly? And, you know, certainly in this day and age with the price of land, the, the economic rules are such that anytime you can gain a couple acres, right, it's to your benefit. Uh, we're looking at more and more programs that are coming out to pay farmers to keep, uh, you know, some wetlands, uh, also to preserve some grasslands, etc. And we're just scratching the surface on understanding this whole biodiversity uh, equation. Great stuff. Hey, Nevin, this has been uh, fantastic to talk to you. This is a really important topic of biodiversity. I think it's it's one where it, it you know everybody defines it probably a little bit differently or how they deal with it. And you've shed a, a lot of light on on that discussion, that decision making. So, uh, and once again, you know we're, whatever we can do to you know, within reason to protect those beneficials, those, 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 those that army <laughs> that is essentially working for you for free is, uh, is really important. So Nevin, thanks a lot for joining us here today. Thanks again, Sean. Always a privilege. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pest and Predator podcast. It's brought to you by Field Heroes, powered by the Western Grains Research Foundation. Visit fieldheroes.ca to learn how beneficial insects can benefit your farm.